My name is Sonia. This is Sonia with an I. Today I am bringing you my April reading wrap up. I had a wonderful, wonderful reading month this month. I read a total of nine books, which is kind of on the lower end side for me, but I read a lot of handheld books and not as many audiobooks, which kind of slows me down, but I am more than happy. I had four five-star reads um, out of nine. That's pretty excellent. I did have two DNFs, which I didn't count in the nine. Um, so let's talk about books. The first uh, book that I have listed is Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe by Fanny Flagg. This book was rated a five-star for me. It is a story of Evelyn, and Evelyn is middle-aged, and uh, she just feels like she's not really living in life. And she goes with her husband, and this takes place in the 80s. She goes to goes with her husband to visit her, hus her mother-in-law and ends up meeting another lady there. And they become fast friends. And the other lady sort of recollects her, her childhood and her growing up and tells all these stories of the of Whistle Stop Alabama and the Whistle Stop Cafe. It is heartwarming. It is touching. Uh, you, It's funny. It's hilarious. I laughed out loud multiple times. It has very short chapters because the way it is told is kind of through um, Ninny, Ninny's memory. And so it, it does hop around a lot. I had to kind of watch the dates to kind of keep some things straight. But I totally gave this five stars. I thought it was ingenious of how, you know, when especially older people with failing memories, she told the story. The story was told like someone who was actually remembering instead of it being linear like a book. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I was so touched uh, by the story. Um I love Fanny Flagg anyway, so this was a definite five stars for me. I read this for the old school April um, tag that was going around or the readathon. I I don't usually participate really hardcore in those because I am such a mood reader. It's difficult for me to set a specific TBR, but I do like to support friends, and uh, I know many of my friends were doing the old school April, so I chose that one um, because it it was took place in the 80s. It was also my mom and my step grandma's favorite movie at that time. And my mother still loves that movie. So um, yeah, I'm definitely glad that I read it. It was excellent. The next book that I read was To Fetch a Felon by Jennifer Hawkins, part of the Chatty Corgi series. This is book number one, and I gave it five stars. The main character's name is Emma, and Emma has a dog named Oliver, which is so funny because my niece, Emma, has a dog named Oliver. And this was uh, a total, I just picked it up at the thrift store. I bought it. It was a cover buy. And um, man, am I not disappointed. Emma is... Uh, she has quit working in London. She was working with money and banking or something, and she was burnt out about it. She wants to come to this cute little town in the Cotswolds and open up a uh, tea shop and bakery. And there's something a little bit unique about Emma because she and her corgi talk to each other, and she understands what the corgi is saying. Uh, this mystery was fantastic. It was interesting. You know, I love a story where the animals talk, and... The he talks like a dog would talk. Like he talks about like people and smells and um I just loved it. I love it. Five stars. I'm already I'm midway through the second book right now in the series. I'm definitely going to finish the series within the next week or so. I just absolutely loved it. Highly, highly recommend if you love corgis, if you love animals, if you love talking animals, or if you just love a a, a little bit of an older sleuth. She's I think she's in her 40s maybe late 30s early 40s not that that is all old because it is not but it's not your average you know 28 year old starting you know she she's not she doesn't have a she's not a jilted love she doesn't have a jilted love she has anything like that she just decided she was tired of doing one job and went to do another one um so good five stars heavily and it's very springtimey too it has a very much a spring it was the springtime cozy mystery vibe that I was looking for that it just it fell in my lap. Total kismet. Um, the next book that I read was Strawberry Girl by Lois Lowry. Um, I gave this book three stars. I read it uh, 
It was a middle grade. I read it for the old school April as well, just because it was an older book. And uh, this main character's name is Birdie, and she and her family have moved from North Carolina, that's how they say it, to Florida, that's how they say it. And uh, the story really focuses on a group of people called the Crackers, the Florida Crackers. I didn't know these people existed. It was in the 1800s, like I, I want to say late 1800s. And she and her family moved because they are wanting to grow strawberries in this garden. And they have these neighbors who it's the whole, it reminds me a little bit of the plot of Oklahoma, like the farmer and the cowman, the farmer and the cowman should be friends. Yeah. That sort of things like there, the neighbor has cows and, and pigs and he lets them just kind of free range and they're trying to get their garden together. So the pigs stomp the garden. It, it's, it's this constant, the, the fathers are jerks. Like somebody needs to take them to the woodshed. So it, the, one of the, the pigs get into their garden. So her father slaughters all the pigs and puts them on the porch. And then her, the other one gets upset and then like, you know, kills the donkey. It's just, I can't get over first of all the poor animals, that part of the story I absolutely did not like. I loved Birdie, the main character. She's the one, she's like a 10-year-old girl and she's trying to keep the peace with these crazy people. And the her father is supposed to be like the good guy. And I'm like, anyway, um, <laughs> I liked the history part. I liked Birdie. I liked some of the, uh, the referencing and just the history of Florida. Because when I think of Florida, I immediately think of like retirement and the Everglades, like the swamps. And then I think of Disney. I don't really think about Florida being kind of like, it reminds me a lot of Ozarks, of a lot of the Ozark kind of hillbilly sort of. And I mean, I grew up, grew up around that. So it, it just, it was interesting, but some of the animal cruelty, eek, yeah. Anyway, like I said, I gave it three stars. The next book that I read was Glory B, The Glory of Broussard Mysteries by Danielle Arsenault. I gave this one three stars too. I went into this thinking it was a cozy. Kids, it's not a cozy. It is not a cozy. Now, Glory is a woman of a certain age, and she is um, she is a card and quite a character. And she kind of just goes through the story like she's sort of a bookie, and she's but she's very involved in church. And she is, uh, she sets up at this coffee shop and she complains about the coffee all the time. I, she is like, she is abrasive and, uh, it, I, she, I thought the story was good. I, I was interested in the story enough to finish it. I was interested in the story to kind of find out what happened, but I will tell you there is an extramarital affair, which I didn't care for. There is dog fights, which I absolutely hate. There was a lot of like criminal activity beyond what a cozy mystery would be that, I don't know, it was a little, a little harsh for me. I, this, I thought the writing was good. And like I said, I thought the mystery was good. And I actually kind of really liked Glory because she's like sassy and she doesn't apologize for her age or her size. And she's just living her life and trying to make the best of things. I like the relationship between her and her daughter. I just, I wanted a cozy and it was not. Um, I This is being marketed as a cozy. It is not. It is uh, a very, very abrasive um, too abrasive for a cozy. I would say that this is more of just a mystery. And um, I gave it three stars, not because it, it just wasn't cozy. I just, that's kind of where I was. The, yeah, the, the dog fighting for me, I almost stopped it at that, but I would, I wanted to know what was going to happen next. So yeah, that was the glory be. The next one I read was Criminally Coco by Amanda Flower. This is a in-between. My library told me this is 1.5 and it's actually 3.5. So I learned some things that I didn't need to know, but spoilers. <laughs> but it, it was enjoyable. It was, I like the fact that it was told from Charlotte's point of view instead of the main character that's normally a part of the Amish candy shop, Bailey's point of view. But they go to New York and they're doing a television show. And this is told from the point of view of a uh, of an Amish girl. So I enjoyed that. I really did. Uh, 3.5 stars, a very, for, for a two hour book, 
that's that's a high rating for me. So I enjoyed it. I learned a little bit more about than I wanted to. That's kind of spoilery, but I thought it was a great story. The next one I read, Five Stars, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Uh, I had never read it before, and I had tried because You've Got Mail is my favorite movie. Pride and Prejudice is Kathleen Kelly's favorite book. I've tried to read it when I was in my 30s. I could not get through it. I was not in the right space for that. I wanted like, I wanted a different kind of book when I was in my 30s. Oh my good gravy, y'all. I, <laughs> I loved it so much. One of my, I have, one of my volunteers at work and I went to see the movie, the Keira Knightley movie at the movie theater they're doing retro retro movies and so we went to see it and y'all the scene with the mist whew, anyway just beautiful it's it's such a gorgeous movie the music the the cinematography the language just beautiful and I thought I'm going to read this I was actually going to read Emma and uh after I watched the movie I put Emma to the side and was like I'm reading this one Oh my gosh, I loved it so much. I loved it. So, the language, the character building, the the messages about the time, the time period, just lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All of y'all, y'all know what Pride and Prejudice is about, but, and I, I am not a, rom I've said this a million times, I'm not really a romance reader, but I thought that this was just, I, I don't like, I'm not a romance, but I love relationships. And that was the part that I loved. And it wasn't just the relationship with Jane, not Jane. Well, Jane's in one too, that's her sister. But not the relationship with uh, Mr. Darcy and uh, I just forgot. Wow. It's not Jane. Anyway, the, the relationship between the two main characters. Okay, that and it'll come to me and I'll be like feeling like a big dummy, but it's such as life. Uh, anyway, the relationship between the main characters is just beautiful. It's just beautiful. But the relationship between her and her dad, that one's the one that hit me. That's what hit me the hardest. I, I just thought it was lovely. Her mom, her mom needs to go to the woodshed too with those two dads because woof. Um, yeah. But five stars, Pride and Prejudice. Five stars, loved it, loved it, loved it. Just thought it was beautiful and, ugh. Uh, yes, gorgeous. The next book that I read was a bunny read with my cousin Fiona. Fiona is uh, a YouTuber as well. She has a channel that's called Reads and Eats, and she is delightful. She reads wonderful books. She bakes with her mom and dad sometimes, which is so cute. I just love her family. Of course I do because we're all family. And she lives in Scotland. She has a delightful accent. She's just a beautiful person. I just have really, really enjoyed getting to know Fiona. Fiona and I buddy, re buddy read Murder Beyond the Page by Lauren Elliott. And even though I didn't really enjoy the story, I did enjoy buddy reading it with her. She was very thorough about her thoughts and things. And we just kind of exchanged thoughts. And uh I didn't care for the story, honestly. Um, I found the main character was sort of flaky and there was a lot of um, unbelievable things happening, like, you know, her hanging out with a police officer while he's investigating, a lot of insta relationships. I did find it interesting enough that I will say that the history and the mystery was good. I enjoyed those and that's what brought it up to a two and me not DNFing it. But uh, yes, I, I won't continue with this series. I wasn't interested enough to find out. But this poor lady, the main character in this, like, so much trauma. It, like, her husband and her father are right, I mean, before the book even starts, she talks about how her husband and her father are murdered. Just like, oof. It seemed too heavy for me. I, anyway, I didn't love it, but I loved, loved, loved doing the... Um, the buddy read with Fiona. So Fiona, thank you so much for doing that with me. You're just a delight and a treat. I appreciate you. The next book I read was Take the Honey and Run. It's part of the beekeeping series by Jenny Martz. I gave it four stars. Um, the main character is Bailey Briggs and Bailey's a single mom and she has a teenage daughter and her Grammy 
a sends word that she has broken broke her leg hurt her leg something and she needs help with the farm and Bailey is a writer so she has a little extra time and she has some movement it's during the summer so her daughter's not in school and she goes home to take care of this granny who may or may not be hurt and uh she ends up kind of just rekindling friendships and relationships and while she's there but um this i i enjoyed her as a character she was very real she had a lot of real feelings a lot of real emotions um i love the teenage daughter um i loved i loved grammy grammy was a spitfire and she has twin sisters her grandmother has sisters who are named marigold and violet i believe so they're named all named after flowers her name is blossom i think um and they call her Granny B. It, it's honey. It's cozy. Uh, great town. Great story. Really enjoyed it. I will continue this series. The next book that I read was Murder in the Scottish Garden. It is by Tracy Hall. It's the second in the Scottish Shire series. I gave it five stars. I adore the Scottish Shire series. Uh, the main character's name is Paisley. Paisley owns a store called Cashmere Crush. She's a single mom. She has a 10-year-old, and her uh, grandpa also lives with her. And uh, Paisley is really kind of level-headed, and she just, as a mom who's trying to be the best mom she can be, run a small business, rekindle a relationship with her grandfather and just sort of live a normal healthy life that's and she's very young she's not even 30 yet and her best friend is very kind of posh and in cosmopolitan and you know they they have this wonderful friendship and uh in this one she is bailey is on a not bailey i'm sorry paisley is on a field trip with her son and uh they find a body on the field trip that's like my worst nightmare i'm glad i mean i don't teach anymore so i don't do field trips well i don't teach elementary anymore so i don't do field trips but that would be like my worst nightmare um they find a body and um of course paisley's the one that kind of trips over the body and then she you know there's a lot a ruckus and she's trying to get all the children and keep them safe and there's, you know, drama with that. It's it's a really great story. This is a great mystery. If you have never picked up um, the Scottish, the Scottish Shire series, I strongly, I would recommend it definitely. Um, it it has a lot of really beautiful descriptions of scenery. She knits. She owns a, a knit shop. So there's some descriptions of that kind of like relaxing activity. She's got. She has a group of. of knitters that come one of them doesn't she just drinks wine which is totally sounds like my my reading club my reading my book club <laughs> which is the one that drinks wine <laughs> that's that's perfectly fine uh so yeah it was it was good it's a very good series um if you're looking for a cozy series to pick up i would suggest tracy hall's scottish shire and that is the last of my books i think that i've said them all i had to jot them down because once it gets more than five i start to forget this month has seemed very long yet very short and I know that makes no sense whatsoever but like talking about Scottish the Scottish garden I felt like I read that two months ago so I think I think Pride and Prejudice did to me I really do because it took me a little longer because I handheld read it and the language is very so it took me a lot of brain power there but yeah it was totally worth it so my two DNFs, and I'm a little leery about talking about DNFs because people, I don't want, I don't know, I don't want to speak badly of books. One of the DNFs that I did was just because it was me. It was totally me. I started reading Kenneth Graham's Wind in the Willows. It's a classic. I've read it before. And uh, I just, I got, I, I look. I guess 75% through it and it just wasn't what I was wanting and then I discovered to fetch a villain and I was gone so yeah I didn't finish that it ran out of time before before I had to finish it so I kind of I guess soft excuse me soft DNF'd it the other one that I read I started was I wanted to read for uh way back October um uh, old school o October Whew. April yeah that's the month we're in, right? Anyway, 
<laughs> old school April, I wanted to read um, Harriet the Spy because I'd mentioned it in my old school April tag and, and was so excited. And I read the first 20 pages of it and it was 20 pages of fat shaming. I don't remember this. Harriet the Spy was like a book I loved, but she is has fat shamed her neighbor's mother and horrible things she said about her. It was like, I know that is not okay with me. I am not reading this. So I DNF'd it, which kind of breaks my heart a little bit. It makes me a little bit nervous about reading some of my other favorites too, because, you know, I don't, I don't like that. You know, I, I don't know. I guess we grow as people, we grow in our reading tastes, but I don't remember that as a kid, but it was also the 1980s and, you know, fat shaming was humor then. So anyway, how was your book? How was your book month? How many did you read? What was your favorite read? Um, if you made it this far, let's say April showers, some sort of raindrop umbrella, um, put one the emoji with that on it. Uh, I would love to hear, like I said, what did you read? How many books did you read? What was your favorite read? I hope that you had a good reading month. I mean, for me, five stars, four star, four or five stars in a, in a month that I, I feel like I'm winner, winner, chicken dinner. So I'm very pleased with that. I, um, I'm hoping to finish some series in May. And I know there's some like middle grade May is coming. I have some ideas for that. So I'll be doing some planning with that. But I also like to keep the TBR loose because I'm a mood reader. And if I happen upon things like the Chatty Corgi series, and I want to read it, boy, howdy, I'm going to. So I hope that you have uh, a wonderful day and a wonderful, I hope you had a wonderful April. Thank you so much for being here. You make the world a better place just by being in it. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe if you have not. Support is absolutely free, but very highly appreciated. So until next time, happy reading. Goodbye now.